On today's episode, we're going to attempt to make a slug mold for the new Air Force 50 caliber Texan that just showed up. All right, welcome back to Fab and Adventures, guys. Today, like I said, we're gonna attempt to make a slug mold for this here 50 caliber Air Force Texan that I just got. She just came in yesterday and uh, I got no ammo to shoot for it. There's no ammo that I can find anywhere in Canada where I can get a 50 caliber or a 51.510 caliber slug anywhere in Canada. So we're going to just make our own mold. Here I've got an old uh, 50 caliber round ball mold and I'm just going to kind of copy the dimensions, use the handles, and I got some old very basic uh, lead casting equipment here. I used to cast round balls for my muzzleloader and I got this bar of aluminum that we're going to make the mold. And we're going to try and make our own bullets for this gun so we can get hunting this weekend. And by the time you guys watch this episode, I will hopefully have successfully made these bullets already and tried them out and got them grouping good and hopefully hunting with it. So let's fire up the lathe. All right, so what I did here is I took that piece of aluminum uh, square bar, inch and a half by inch and a half square bar, cut it down to a chunk like this, split it, and then I'll be putting it in the mill and milling it flat. And then we'll be chucking this guy into the four jaw chuck. And we're just gonna make a single bullet mold or maybe a dual bullet mold out of it. If it turns out good, I'll probably make a dual bullet mold and see how, it, you know, see how that works. But the first thing we need to do is we need to take this piece of 01 5 8 tool steel rod and basically make like a spoon cutter type of thing and I'll end up drilling a hole probably 7 16 in here and then making this uh, into a spoon cutter the shape of a bullet and then we'll spoon in there and then we'll come to the side to get the actual diameter of bullet that we need to make. Now, I don't know how much shrinkage there is gonna be when you cast, uh, you know, you're probably gonna shrink two or three thousandths or something like that. So if I need 5.10, I might need to make this bullet size 5.1 or 0.513, and then it'll shrink down to 0.510, and then I might have to make a sizing die yet to boot. But we're gonna cut this off in the saw and then chuck it in here and start cutting our bullet shape. All right, so I looked at a couple of bullet designs on the internet, found one I kind of liked, and made some modifications, changed it so I'm, I'm not exactly copying it, and I'm making it work for my purposes. So this here is gonna be the bullet, and my idea, or my thoughts, is to possibly make a hollow point uh, mandrel that goes into the mold at some point in time so that you can either make this bullet a solid point or a hollow point and we'll see if I get there if I make that but I think what I'm gonna do first off is get the bullet cutter made and then I'll get a mold made and see how it casts if it casts good and everything then I'll probably make another mold with those mandrels in it and uh, that'll be a pretty neat little thing if I can do it and I've never done this before so let's just see if I can do it it's all part of the fab and adventures well the final shape of the bullet hopefully that's gonna work we're just gonna polish this up it's a little bit sharp here right now we'll just polish it up a little bit and we should be good all right well there's the cutter 
So now we basically got to shave this side down so it's going to fit in this tool holder here. And then we're going to have to shave half this bullet down so that it can scrape the uh, mold out. But what I did is I took my time and really polished it up because any imperfection in this cutter is going to put it into the mold. So it has to be perfectly, perfectly polished right up. And I think that's going to be a pretty sweet looking little bullet. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to mill out this side here flat and it'll be like an indexing mark that way I can put it flat to the tool cutter and then I'll cut away this bullet at 90 degrees to that that way it's always flat you just put it in the tool cutter and it'll be flat so let's mill this bad boy There you go, spoon type cutter. And you'll see how it works, hopefully tomorrow. So here's the mold block so far, it's pretty good. I've got some little tiny alignment pins in there that way it goes together the same way every time no wiggle play at all and then the handle will go on there so now we're basically ready to chuck it up in the four jaw chuck and drill out our hole and try out our tool let's see how she goes okay if i did this right i should be able to drill this hole and use the cutter in later to make the shape of the bullet then I should be able to basically just loosen these blocks a little bit, swap, turn the block around end for end, and I should be able to do another one and have like a two bullet mold. So here goes. So it's about time to run the tool in and cut out sideways. And I'm gonna use this drill bit and I measured it with two different uh, micrometers, both come out to 466 thousandths. So when I can get that in there at 466, just so that it slips in, then I know how many more thou I have to do to get to 510. Because right now, I'm not sure if this was a little bit crooked, but I just spent like half an hour dialing this sucker in to have it dead straight in there. Cause I got thinking last night, if it's not perfectly dead straight in there, you're gonna make the bullet wider at the front or wider at the back than perfectly even. So <clears throat> we got her dialed in. We're gonna go in, cut it, start cutting the grooves and making the bullet diameter bigger. All right, so my original plan and original bullet cutter didn't work when you start pulling sideways there's just too much torque and it makes the bullet shaped you know not square so i got another idea let's give this a go so what i did here is i made a complete new cutter it's got no ribs it's shaped to 513 diameter and i'm hoping that it's going to shrink down to 511 somewhere in there and then we can run it through a sizing die and uh, we should be good. So let's give this a go. So now what I did is I took my center finder, got it on center, then I pre-drilled a hole, and then now I've got the cutter installed, and we're gonna give, see if we, see if that'll cut down in there. Let's, let's see how it goes. All right, that actually cut pretty nice. Let's uh, see if the mold will come apart and see what it looks like in there. Pretty decent. It's a good thing I made this a two bullet mold. I'll show you here. So there you can see it. The top one is the new 
bullet and the bottom one is the old one that just did not work. So we're going to be able to try and cast with that top one and see what it comes out with. So I cast some bullets last night and they actually turned out pretty good. They're a little oversized, which is good. They're a couple thou oversized. So what we're doing now is we're just taking an old 44 Magnum die and we're boring it out to hit 510 and then that'll end up being a sizing die. We'll be able to push these bullets through, size them to 510 and then we should be good. So. Just taking a real slow couple thou cuts at a time. I'm just nearing about 500 right now. So I got about 10 more thou to go. So take it easy because we don't want to go over. All right, looks like we got her here. This bullet slips in and it should slip in till it starts sizing. So we'll put her in the press and try her out. All right, so the bullet sizer worked. I'm a half thou under 510, so five nine and a half diameter on the bullets. Turned out pretty good. These are stick on wheel weights, so they're pure lead. Let's see, this is gonna be the first shot. I haven't sighted the scope obviously or nothing because this is the first shot. So hopefully I even hit the target. Woo! Holy! <laughs> Holy! That ain't your daddy's or grandpa's air gun. Holy crap! <laughs> Let's go have a look. Here's the slug. I had this stump behind her and it just caught the stump. <laughs> Holy crap! Wow. So obviously I'm quite a bit low. I'm gonna have to bring the scope way up, but that is not bad for the very first shot. So I'm at 30 yards here, which is, you know, nothing for that gun. You're supposed to be able to do 100 or 120 yards on a deer sort of thing. <clears throat> well, that's impressive. Let's pump her up, bring the scope up and see if we can dial her in a little more. All right, we got the target out at 50 yards. I cranked up the scope a bunch. Let's see how we do. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh. 